welcome, my friend. Welcome home. We waited for you so long. We're happy to see you with us again. Our love for you is so strong. So the, the most positive thing we can contribute in the world is how we treat the children because they're going to have more time and more power to create the world in a sensible way, a way in which we're all helping each other instead of hurting each other. And so I want to reach further than I can reach in these camps, although these camps are great because they show us practically how we can actually do it on the ground, in the earth. Every day we play with the children and we learn from them, we help them. They make, it, they make us feel more hopeful about the future. And I want the information and the ideas to go out further. Every place I go where there's a new group of people and they come to hear me, they get all excited. For instance, last year we went to Ireland for the first time. We hadn't been to Ireland before. And there at our, at our workshop in County Clare, there was a man who said he had been looking and looking and looking for community. And he learned all the things that we need to do to make the earth better and this and that and all the technology we needed and everything else. And he was still something missing. And when he came to our workshop, he said, yes, that's it. That's what's missing. It's how we treat people, how our distance, our, our separation, our isolation, and how we treat the children. And he was so fired up and, that uh, he just put it out to everybody. And everybody said, yeah, that's right. And now they are gathering on their own to begin to create community in the circle way, what we're doing with the children. We'd had a week with them earlier in May, and uh, they are on their way. And this is the experience that we have everywhere we go. So I think it's universal when we really get to heart to heart to talk to each other and open up our hearts. Everybody in the world wants peace. Everybody in the world would like to have a beautiful world, a healthy world, a safe world for their children. Everybody would like to have love, more love in their lives, more fun, more relaxation, less stress. There are a lot of places where everybody in this world can agree. And that being so, it's very hopeful. All we have to do is get together and listen to each other. I have this little cap here that has these buttons on it. And one of my favorite buttons says, none of us is as smart as all of us. That's a, a motto for the circle, I think. That uh, all these experts and all these executives and, and so forth, uh, are all very well, and all the academics and the research is all very well, but we really know when we put our hearts together and we listen to each other, and we're free up our thinking and our creativity. As I always say, there is nothing we cannot do when we're together. Uh, so with this book, the beginning of the book talks about relationship because Maiello said everything in life is relationship. And what makes a relationship good is that everybody in the relationship derives good from the relationship. So we have a relationship, for instance, with the sun. And that's good because the sun is giving us energy and we love the sun, and the sun, we, we, we need to preserve that. But unfortunately, for quite a long time now, we have been interfering with that relationship, as uh, Thomas Berry 
pointed out, it's the first time in history that human beings have really drastically altered the relationship of life on this planet to the sun. And that's dangerous and scary. We have a relationship to the earth, to all the growing things, and yet we are doing things for profit, for money, that are not healthy for life on this planet. And it's affecting things adversely. And the, of course, the, the big profits, the big money people are fighting in the governments, making laws so that they can, we can't tamper with that. Uh, so it's getting worse at this point. We have to have the information get more generally known of what's going on like that. And that's happening. There are there's a lot of good environmental organizations and I'm part of, I subscribe to all of them uh, that's trying to get the word out. But as I said, the, the essence of, of what's really wrong is our isolation from each other, our separation. And that is what we need to, to work at in order to make a change that will, will make a difference for us all and give us all those things that we all together want. Peace and safety and health and love and beauty and, and all that. Creativity. Fun. Uh, so, we need to look at all our relationships. And in, in this book, of course, the primary relationship we're looking at is our relationship to children. Our attitude about children. It needs to be one of complete respect. And as in all relationship, how we relate to a child needs to be good for us and good for the child. We need to be thinking of what's good for the child. Sometimes we think we know, but without that respect we're not really listening to them. And that is very important. This new way of being with children is not a way of control. Because when you try to control anybody, a child or anybody, you set up a barrier. You set up, they're going to fight back, or they're going to hide, or they're going to run, run away. You're not going to be working together hand in hand. So the new way of being with children is not to control, but to connect. And to be so close that you can guide the child along the way. There are places where we need to keep them safe. We need to show them where the boundaries are, where the limits are that will hurt them or hurt life or hurt anything. And uh, that we can do completely respectfully, completely closely as a friend of the children. In order to relate in the best way with children, we have to be in ourselves in better shape so that we're not angry and getting our buttons pushed or getting depressed or any of the unhelpful ways that, that we might be. So there's some things in the book about how to help each other be the best we can be when we're with our children. And then there's a, a chapter about actually relating to the children what uh, how we can view the way they look at the world, how we can think about our own childhood, what it was like when we were a child, and what, what are they thinking, what are they feeling as they're growing up in a world which is not their world, they don't have any power in our world. So we want to enter their world sometimes where we can get closer, and their world is a world of play. That's their business, play. That's how they learn. We come into the world 
very curious, very interested, and it's exciting, this world, and we learn about it by play, playfulness, playing, and having fun, and laughing a lot. They can teach us a lot in that. We don't do any play very much when we're, we're older, and some of the play we do do is very competitive and harsh and, and, and not really a lot of fun. It doesn't enhance closeness sometimes. Anyway, the, the most important early chapter is the chapter on play. How to play with children, how to let them invite us into their world of play and teach us how to play. And when we do, it's a great gift because we get to know them much more deeply when, we, when they allow us to play with them. We can watch and listen and pay attention and know who they are and, and play together. There are many other things about the relationship spending time with children, being creative with children, setting limits for children, dealing with children when they have problems and so on. But we come to what's unique about this particular book towards the end, the last two chapters. Chapter 11 is about parent liberation. Because we need, we, we have been li liberating ourselves as women or as men or as uh, different ethnic backgrounds or different racial backgrounds or different religious backgrounds. We have been trying to bring ourselves globally together more to get closer to one another and at least have justice and uh, uh, help people to be equal and uh, have power within their own lives to, to determine their lives, determination of autonomy. That's been happening since I was born, which was in 1929. A lot of things have happened. Uh, you uh, younger people couldn't realize the world of racism that was going on, the world of sexism that was going on, the world of uh, uh, in which uh, homophobia ran rampant. And all these places where people were really hurt deeply hurt, uh, people with psychological problems and physiological problems, so many, and, and of course the earth, how we treat that. It's a, we have come to a point now which uh, Joanna Macy calls the great turning. My friend Albert Bates calls uh, the great change. Charles Eisenstein, a writer I, I enjoy very much for his analysis of things, uh, calls it uh, the age of reunion. We've been separated. And that's caused all the stuff that's hurting now. But now we're beginning to come together. We're beginning to listen to each other. We're beginning to listen to the earth. We're beginning to listen to the children. And uh, this is making a difference. We can see it and feel it. And we all need to plug into that and, and promote that as much as possible. That's why in writing my books, I realized that uh, I may talk to a thousand people personally in a year, but that's not going to get me very far in the number of years I have in my life, considering there's seven billion people on the planet. However, if I can get things into books, then at least the literate people in the world, there'll be many more millions who uh, get a, a 
what we're doing here will be available to them. Uh, so I'm suggesting to parents that they're the last dominated, oppressed group that needs to liberate themselves. And like every other group, like the women who make, got together in circles and said, hey, we are oppressed and we won't stand for it anymore. And in every oppressed group, they had to get together and get allies to support them and make themselves a force in the world. Parents need to do the same thing. They need to let the world know they're doing the most important work in the world without any pay for it, without any credit for it, without, without people even giving them uh, any encouragement. They say, take care of those children. They're, they're your responsibility. No help. So parents have got to let the rest of the world know that uh, they are doing the most important work and they need support. So we are making family workshops and family camps and trying to encourage people, uh, encourage parents to find other parents wherever they live to get together, to support each other, to listen to each other, to encourage each other, to help each other with the raising of the children. And that is the liberation, a parent liberation movement that I would like to see. So it affects the governments on how uh, the resources that they have that are available to them. They need a lot more. We need a lot more attention to the children and to the parents. The last chapter is an outgrowth of that. It was a woman, a uh, pediatrician in Italy, follower of Maria Montessori, one of the great thinkers about children, giving full respect to children and their, uh, how they grow and how they learn, who was impressed by the Native American way in the old days, traditional way of the circles, taking the children as um, the children of everybody in the circle. Whether they were blood related or not, they are our children and they all were involved. The clan and uh, the leaders and everybody were proud that when a child is born, he's brought into the circle and everybody rejoices. This wonderful new being has been sent to us to love and to care and it's bringing us all this love and this joy, this excitement and play and so on. That affects the community and the quality of life in the community, of course. So she saw that and she said, let's do that. Let's go back to that way. Let's make a circle of parents who will all take care of their children together. And she had this vision and she read my book in which I talked about the old ways, how it was and my experience of of some of the Native American communities that still have the remnants of that way of life and how it is for the children and everything. And she got all excited and she came to meet me and talk about it and asked me could we do some work together and we began to do family workshops. And after the first family workshop, in which we get together and have the parents learn how to play with the children and how to relate to them and how to help them. Uh, she had the editor of her books at that workshop and the editor said to me, this might make a good book, could you write this book? And I said, I guess so. And I went to work on it and because uh, they said they would print it. And uh, it, it began to teach me as I wrote because I began to do the research to back up what I was saying of what was going on actually in the world of childcare and uh, my own thinking from the traditional ways and so on. The last chapter is the culmination of that. It is the creation of new communities which are child-centered, which have 
all the spaces of the respect for children as their center. Everybody cooperating, helping each other, helping each other to protect, to shelter, to feed, and to care for the children, especially. So the subtitle of the book and the title of the last chapter is It Takes a Child to Raise a Village. And we are looking at the possibility of making these, the people in Italy right now, and I just left them because we published the book in Italian already. They are looking to start a community based in these old ways of being with the children, with the new techniques of how to get close, how to break through the isolation that we, we have and work together to bring all our love to bear on the children and with each other. Uh, and I'm seeing that it is universally possible. We have many communities, large ones we call echo villages, around the world, thousands that most people don't even know about. There is a global echo village network in Europe. Africa and Asia, Pacific and the Americas, different networks. I will be presenting my t material at the Global Echo Village Network for Europe annual meeting next month. I'm very hopeful about that too. To let people know that uh, we have now some good methods of getting closer to each other of enhancing our relationships and making them better for each other and especially for the children. So I'm very uh, excited about this year's burst of activity in the Circle Way and the growth of the Circle Way as a movement where everywhere we're presenting something, people come forward and say, we are starting a circle or we have already begun a circle and we want to grow the circle, we want to connect with other people in other circles and uh, my vision of it eventually would be to have enough of these supporting each other that gradually a culture of caring and love, a culture of giving, a culture of closeness will begin to replace the culture of money and greed and commercialism and competition and uh, ways of looking at people that cut them out of our hearts. And I know that it's possible because I've had such community myself. We began a community like that in 1978, and it lasted for about 20 years. Uh, we still have the same land, and we could grow it again, but we've been over here in Europe because my elders told me I should go wherever I'm invited, and this is the place where I got invited the most. And so although I have another movement growing in Florida, this is, this is where it really happens here. Uh, it's very strong in Bavaria, where we are now, in Austria. We already have a community using the methods of the Circle Way to stay close, to help each other. We have, as I say, the people in Italy who are wanting to start one there. In Ireland, they are wanting to start one there. And in other parts of Europe and northern Germany, uh, there's people who are actively trying to push this forward in Spain, in the uh, Czech Republic for the first time last year, Greece for the first time last year, and uh, in the UK for the first time last year. The thing is, wherever we apply this notion that love is our essence, 
and we are really open to it, if we apply it not only to our loved ones that we have close to us, but to the people that oppose us or the people that restrict us, the warriors and the people that are putting out harsh restrictions for everything else, where we really can bring our love to bear, it does make a difference. Because that is there in all of us. As I said, the, the inspiration for the book was simply that the publisher, the editor of this publishing company was at the family workshop in which I got the people to uh, think about the children in their way and to play together with the children. And the children had a wonderful time. The parents had a wonderful time. And at the very end, this editor said, this would make a very good book. Can you write this book? And I said, yes. And they said, well, if you do, we'll publish it. Well, that's a big incentive right there. So that's why it came out in Italian first. The English version I still have in my computer and I'm giving it out to people who ask me for it specifically. I'm sending it out free to anybody who wants it. The book is about the circle way, that is the way of connecting with each other and helping each other and listening to each other. There are three concepts that that book is about. The first concept is listening. And whatever you do with a child, that's the first thing I suggest. If the child is happy, listen to it. If the child is distressed, un unhappy, or hurt, or angry, listen to them. They need to express themselves. And that's how you know how to give them help, of course. But the first help is that they get heard. And that you let them know that you heard them and you understand. They want to be understood. That's primary. They also need hugs. Listen and hug. Physical hugs. Put your hand around and ruffle the hair. Give them a kiss. And the hugs in, in a look, a smile. The hug that, in a word that says, I'm so happy you're in my world. You make my life so much better. A child needs to know that. A child needs to know that they've got a good place in your life. So listen and hug. And the third concept is play. To realize that for a child, play is the most important function. How they learn, how they grow. Uh, having fun is what life is about for a child and we sh might want to take that as a lesson. Maybe we should rethink our attitudes toward life. Maybe having fun is a better way to look at our lives. If fun means being closer to each other, enjoying each other, enjoying the moment, the world, enjoying the children, real fun, and not the fun of uh, computer games or sports or something like that, which is, you know, is okay, but the deep fun is, is the fun we have in love, in love with life, with beauty, in love with each other. That's where, that's where we get to know who we are and why we are. We are here to love.